Hello there, how's everybody doing? This is Laughing Boy, and I am here with a brand new series called Let's Talk, where I'll be interviewing everybody's favorite Let's Players and content creators, who they are, the history of their channel, and how they do what they do. Here with me tonight on our very first show, he has just completed his playthrough of Phoenix Wright Trials and Tribulations, and you can still catch his playthrough of Pokemon Omega Ruby if you could introduce yourself, please. Howdy guys, I'm Nintendo Capri Sun. <laughs> how's, it, how's it going? Better than ever. Good. Um, so, we're going to start off with a couple of general questions. This is Sounds just good. kind of get to know your Let's Player for everyone who's just watching this for the first time. Um, right. So, you want to just tell me about yourself? What's uh, your name, age? Sounds good. ASL. <laughs> oh man, I haven't seen that acronym in a while. <laughs> My name is Timothy Bishop. I am sorry to say, thirty-nine years old. Sorry. And, uh, <laughs> currently residing in Ohio, about an hour north of Columbus. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> pretty much it. Um, so. Where did your screen name come from? That's one of those, um, <laughs> when I was in 8th grade, I kind of made up a bunch of nicknames for myself, and they all had Nintendo in them, and I had, like, this whole two sheets worth, probably two columns on each sheet, and just for some, I don't know whatever happened to it, I wish I still had it now, but one of the names on there was Nintendo Capri Sun, and at the time, I remember thinking that that was, like, the worst name on there, because of how <laughs> obvious it was. That I was looking around the house for stuff to, like I probably saw Capri Sun on the table and just thought, oh, Nintendo Capri Sun, and wrote that there. Uh, but it had to have Nintendo in the title? Yeah, pretty much. Was that just like, just a screen name that you made, and um, like you, what was it originally intended for? I don't really know, I guess I was going to tell my friends to start calling me that or something, or maybe I was going to start <laughs> calling myself that, I don't really remember. It was like yeah, like a secret I, name or something. <laughs> I mean, I know a lot of, or a couple of Let's Players are like, oh, I've had that name since I was, you know, such and such age, and I just kind of brought it into YouTube. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, because I've had names like that, too, like Einstein. I could have just, because people used to call me that, because I was good at math, so. <laughs> oh, really? uh -huh. So I'm sure there are a lot of Let's Players that might be doing this on top of other things, like work, um, or school work, college. So, mm -hmm. I'm going to, I guess, go out on a limb. Are you currently a student? I am not. Right? I probably should be, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you employed? Do you have uh, uh, any other work besides Let's Playing? Not at the moment, no. Right. I mean, it, at this point, it probably pays for itself, right? Pretty much. I mean, I think about getting a job sometimes just to get out of the house, but that's about it. Right. So, how many hours do you typically spend working on your Let's Plays, like, per week? It could, it kind of depends on, you know, what I'm doing at the time. And this this week, I'm pretty busy. I'll probably work to, like, well, what is today? Today is Wednesday. I probably already put 30 hours in now. So, like, it could be anywhere from 20 to, like, 60. I don't even know. But so, you just, you kind of... I don't know. The way that I put it is like game grumps it. You just kind of just keep going with one single recording. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I I know it's a lot easier to do if you have a uh, multi-person channel, but no, it's mm -hmm. it's it is a way to do it. Definitely. <laughs> I, this will stop being awkward for me in just a little bit once I get warmed up. <laughs> that's all good. Yeah, that's always so, weird at first. Yeah, right? It's like I've never done this before. <laughs> what was it that got you into playing video games, actually? Oh, wow. So, well, I probably... Um, I remember this one night, my parents went somewhere. I was like four years old at the time. They went to a friend's house, and they brought me with them. And at the friend's house, they had this game called Clowns and Balloons on their TV. And I was watching them play, and eventually my dad, I guess, or somebody suggested, let me try... So I got up there and tried it, and I was just, like, hooked. The idea that I could control what was happening on the TV, <laughs> that was intoxicating to me. And <laughs> so I, ever since then, it's been never, never been the same. Why have I heard of that game before? What Do you know what that's for? Ooh, that's a oh. really old game. It's like predates even Atari, I think. Really? It might have been Atari, but 
it's basically a game where you control like the trampoline at the bottom of the screen. You have to move it back and forth, and the clown bounces on it and collects balloons that are moving them back and forth at the top of the screen. Uh, you try to get them all and get the points or whatever. That might be Atari. It that seems so a little fun. too complex for Magnavox. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so is that the first video game you ever owned then? Actually, no. No, my first game was well, shoot. I mean, I guess if you count, like, games on the TRS-80, the Radio Shack computer. There you uh, now, that you, now that you mention it, Dungeons of Daggerith was actually the first game I owned. And, and I helped that. that. Yeah. Yeah, you did. Um, was that the first game you ever beat? No, I actually didn't beat it till like, a long time later. I was, like, I was probably six was the first time I played it, but I never beat it until I was, like, 12 or 13. Okay. Um, so then what was um, what what was the first game I played after? Oh yeah, 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 or ever beat? Oh, the first game I ever beat. Oh, that would be. Yeah. Oh jeez, that would be Super Mario Brothers One. Oh yeah. Yep. So that was pretty much the first game. That was, at first, that was my answer for the question. The, like the first game I owned, but then I forgot about like the computer and everything. But yeah. Yeah, that that counts. You ask Reddit, it counts. Yep. <laughs> Um, what about, like, uh, well, it's kind of an odd question to ask for Super Mario Brothers, but, um, 100% it, is there, like, a game, let's say there, there was a game you first played that actually kind of kept track of, like, progression, 0 to 100. Yeah. What was the first game you ever, like, 100%ed? Uh, that would be Zelda one, then. Yeah, actually, that's a good answer, good answer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, Super Mario Brothers... Legend of Zelda, and we had Dungeons of Daggerath. Yep. That's kind of a... That was almost um, like my holy trinity at this point. <laughs> it's kind of weird. It's a wild uh, set of genres. Is there, like... Is there one that you played most? I know that there are a lot of people that kind of pick Ooh. one genre as their, like, their big thing. I'd say Zelda is probably the one I played the most. Right. So, like, adventure games? Yeah. Yeah. There's just so many different ways to play, like, Swordless, or just with just the blue ring, or whatever. Oh my god, I actually... <laughs> that reminds me of, um, a store that I could plug right now, but, uh, we... <laughs> oh, that was a party. There you go. Yep. Um, we need at least one of those an episode. I'm <laughs> contractually obligating you to do this. Oh, okay. Yeah, there you go. Contractually uh, obligating... Uh, anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, that's not the right... Anyway... My point is, <laughs> there was a, we, at our game store, we had a contest that was actually just beat the first dungeon swordless. Huh. And oh, the man. fact that you actually beat the entire game swordless still astounds me. Oh, man, yeah, that was, uh, that was something. <laughs> yeah. I, because I mean, how much, how much did you play that game before you reached that point where you could just do that? It wasn't too long, maybe a few years, but, uh. Really? Uh, the thought never crossed my mind to even try it, Swordless, until I I just randomly did it one day, I guess. I just kind of thought, <laughs> I wonder if that's possible. Yeah, what if I didn't do that? Like, pick up the sword. One of those self-imposed challenge things. Yeah. Back then, you had to do it yourself. There were no trophies. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, so let's see. What is your absolute favorite game, then, so far? Um, Secret of Mana. Right. Yeah. I, I know that's that's one that you've definitely mentioned a lot, but I figured let's just put it right here so everyone can see it loud and clear. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's actually a really good game, but it's very... It's kind of confusing. It has its issues, I won't lie. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I love how some of the... like I've got some old Nintendo powers talking about it, and they're like, Oh, yeah, you're definitely going to get captured by goblins in the first five minutes. Never happened to me. <laughs> No, it doesn't. <laughs> that happens no. more like an hour in or something. Yeah. Well, it. If I remember, or even it's then, just, it's actually optional that cutscene. Well, I, I don't remember how I triggered it the second time or the first time I did it. Just never happened. Ah. So I was actually really surprised when it did. Um, it happened to me in the SNES version. Maybe it's the difference between iOS and SNES. I don't know. Possibly. Ah. <laughs> uh, let's go for the exact opposite. What game do you hate? Well, okay, hate may be a strong word, but what game do you yeah. not like the most? 
this one's weird because like up to for a long time when people ask me this question, I would say spy versus spy. But, really? Like, because I, I mean, I've never even seen or heard of the game since then. But and I kind of feel bad when I say it because my best friend gave it to me for my birthday. <laughs> but then, late, in retrospect, I can see why he did because it was pretty shitty. But I think like uh, probably a more popular answer would be Back to the Future. That game's pretty oh. bad. Yeah, I, I I keep seeing it online. I'm like, do I really? Like, <laughs> I have Ghostbusters on the NES, and it's only because I got it for free. Oh god. Um, yeah, like, and it's a recent thing. I didn't have it as a kid. I wasn't scarred by it or anything. I just kind of have it now as an adult. Uh, one of these days, I may just whip out the NES Max and just hold down the uh, turbo <laughs> buttons. Yep. Just say, I'm not playing fair. Nope. So Spy vs. Spy is, um... What system is that on, actually? That was on the NES. Right. Yeah, it's like a... Basically, you just walked around a series of rooms and then set traps and hope the other person tripped them. And that was pretty much it. Oh. Uh, and actually, that kind of reminds me, because you were talking about it during your LP, um, I'm going to bring up Yonoid. What sure. Guys, I am so the whole, entire time, you're just like, why am I doing this? Sorry. Yeah. Do you mind if I ask why you did this? It was just like, uh, well, for part of it is I saw the Game Grumps do it, but also, I've kind of gotten oh, it in right. my head that I want to do every single game that I've ever played in my life, eventually. And it's one of them. I started making a list, trying to think of as many games as I could. And it was on that list, and I thought, well, you know, it would be easy. So I thought, why not? I had memories associated with it, so I know I could pull it off. <laughs> when it's short enough where it just wouldn't wear on you, right? Yeah, true. It, was, it went by pretty quickly. Yeah. It's kind of something to watch out for, I guess, in personal experience. If you pick a game that you're not... Even if you're not 100% and since games are so much longer now, you have to deal with it for like 20 hours. Yeah, exactly. You, yeah, you either just got to finish it or just cancel it. Mm -hmm. Are there any games that you didn't like when they were released, but like you started to like them over time? Hmm. I really, I don't know, I can't really... I guess, to be honest, I wasn't that crazy about Mystic Quest, and then I've kind of... You grew to love that one, mostly because of the music, though. But there, I mean, there was also, like, I mean, I didn't really actually think Zelda 1 was all that great at first. Really? When, like, when I would watch my friend play it, and I would always be like, let's go back to Super Mario Brothers, but he would want to play Zelda. And later on, <laughs> I discovered why it was so great, but, but at the time, technically, I really didn't like it that much, and then I grew to love it. Okay, so, um, now that we're talking about it, are there any, like, favorite gaming memories from your past? There are so many of these, I couldn't even, I don't even know where <laughs> I'd start. Uh, you there can start a, with any of them. Okay, well, there was, um, there was the day I was playing Tetris, and my parents were arguing behind me, and I was on <laughs> level 19, which is like, if you've ever played that, it's like, damn near yeah. impossible when you get to that point. All of a sudden, I just started blasting through it. Bam, got a Tetris. Bam, got another Tetris, level 20. Got another Tetris, and they they were arguing back there. They just stopped and started watching me. And I hear my dad go under his breath. He's like, "Holy shit!" And I'm like, <laughs> and I don't know. Like I, I like I had this huge smile. I was like using every ounce of my strength not to smile because you get that like that weird look on your face where your mouth is all puckered up and you're trying not to smile. So yeah. They could probably tell, but anyway, they they never they did well. I mean, they did argue after that, but for that time. <laughs> I stopped him with my Tetris skill. So mm -hmm. That was always a good memory. And there was like a link to the past when I first got it, and I brought it to my friend's house. And then we well, went off and took a walk in the middle of the night. And when we came back, his younger brother was sitting there, just in the sanctuary, just sitting there listening to the music and saying, oh my god, this is great music. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? So there was that. That night was pretty cool. Just coming back to the house. Oh, there was, uh, we renting Super Mario Brothers 3 when my parents rented that for me for a week. And I just played it, played the shit out of it. Then, of course, when time ran out, you know, we had to take it back. <laughs> I was such an asshole, because, like, they were saying, okay, you gotta stop playing now, and I'm like, okay, I hope you're satisfied. And I turned off the system. 
I feel so <laughs> bad for that even my now. life. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I mean, more recently, there was like, after I had my teeth pulled, I you know, bought a PS2 that same day and went home and played Final Fantasy X for like three days straight while I was recovering. Oh, God. So, I had an that awful... That game was instrumental to my recovering. <laughs> I had an awful memory about... Um, getting my tonsils taken out and my parents were like oh, oh god we'll totally buy you a ps2 yeah they never did that Ooh. oh my god <laughs> i felt horrible but oh my god Bad. i got to catch up on almost all the snes games i hadn't beaten in the two weeks i got off of school oh, so, that's i mean cool. there was that <laughs> i suppose yeah i'm just sitting there like this is like a ps2 i guess this is like meditating yeah <laughs> Um, are there any more? I like this. I like this. Oh, I, like this. Uh, <laughs> so I was um the first time I ever played a 3D Final Fantasy was actually Final Fantasy VIII. So I didn't oh, play yeah. Final Fantasy VII until way later. But I was house sitting for my sister who was on vacation, and I rented Final Fantasy VIII then. So I'm like all alone in this strange apartment. I have no idea where anything is, and I'm sitting here playing this game, and just like. You know, at the time, I only had one job, and it was a part-time job, so I didn't have to worry too much about work. So I just sat there and played it, like, all day long, and I was so engrossed in the story. And I read a spoiler online that one of the main characters in the game dies, and it turns out she doesn't die. Oh. But, so all through the game, every time something happened to her, I was thinking, oh, no, this is it. And I'm sitting there waiting for it, and then... By the time I got to the end of the game, it's almost like I couldn't believe what I was watching because there she was, still alive. And I'm like, <laughs> so even though it was like a, oh, God, I hope Super Genius is not watching this, but <laughs> <laughs> but even though it was a happy ending, it was like bittersweet because I was sitting there anticipating that she wasn't going to be there. So I don't know. It was, That's right. Like I got even more invested in the story because of that. That's, yeah, and I, what is it? There's the, um. There's that video game theory about how Squall dies in the first disc. Yeah, I read about that. That's yeah. so weird. I never knew about the, the face thing, where like his face is cut out. I'd yeah. never seen that before, and then I saw it like a month ago, and I was like, oh my god, <laughs> scary as hell. Yeah, it's a little creepy. Because um, my friend told me that, and it when you read it... Cause it I'm makes not, total sense. It does make a lot of sense. I'm I'm usually not the guy who's like, oh, I love like game theories. I actually get annoyed anytime someone brings up the oh. whole Mario kills the mushroom villagers th- through the blocks. <laughs> That's understandable, though. I mean, ugh. so I I don't know. I of all the gaming theories that I've heard, I think that's probably my favorite because it's just like, holy crap, that is kind of true. <laughs> oh my god. Um. Yeah. Uh. So, one last question about, I guess, who you are as a person, and then we'll move on to how you are as a, as a channel, if sure. that makes sense. Mm-hmm. What, uh, I guess this is console war question, what, is, what side oh, of the no. console war would you be on? Oh, man. Well, I mean, in my heart, it's got to be Nintendo, but realistically, if I, were, if I had to bet on who I thought was going to survive the war, oh, that's a good then to think about Sony. It. Sony would be my Really? Bet. Yeah, because they seem to be kind of on and off. I their their PS one like age was pretty good. Their PS two yeah. age they freaking skyrocketed. Yeah, it did. And then the PS three they were basically just playing catch up the entire like seven years that it was on the market. Yeah, true. Um, and then suddenly they just pick it right the frick back up with PS four. Yeah, it is. I don't know why. I have a funny feeling though about the PS four and like it's. Well, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> It's it's um, <laughs> it's been a little disappointing for me every now and then. Yeah, it's weird that I say that because I actually have a Wii U and I have an Xbox One, but I don't have a PS4. So I don't even know why I'm saying. Yes. That, really. I mean, Nintendo's gonna be around for a while, but I tell you, without the oh, yeah. third-party support, I mean, they're they really should get on that. But well, well, and one of the things that always that I always thought about is that Nintendo is one of the few companies where they look at a system that's I wouldn't say failing, but just slacking. Mm-hmm. And they're the only company that goes, what can we do to fix it? And then they just start mm. just crapping out game after game after game, and they're all first party. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It just, they can turn it around all by themselves. 
without third party support. And I just, it's kind of interesting to see that Sony, Microsoft are just kind of like, we have our own studios, but we're <laughs> yeah. relying on the third parties to do all the work. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of, the, I mean, the same thing's happening in the movies now, though. I mean, you see every everything that comes out is like a Jurassic World or it's like a sequel or a copy of something else or something yeah. like, trying to capitalize on some previously established whatever. There's gonna be more. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Not to rip on Jurassic Did- World. I'm sure it's great. I haven't seen it yet. But Oh, you haven't? It was, it was pretty good. Uh, I agree with a lot of the reviews. It's better than 2 and 3, but not as good as 1. That's cool. <laughs> right. So, now that we're talking about Jurassic World, we're actually going to take a break real quick, and then we're going to move on to channel questions. Cool. Um, this will be it for today's episode, and we'll just continue on with this You know, whenever the next one comes out. I have no idea how I'm doing this. That's Literally cool. making it up as I go along. <laughs> that works for me. All right, so let me take a quick break, and we will be back with more Let's Talk. See ya. Bye. 